Now, as you guys all know, I mostly enjoy producing videos for this channel that have a certain timeless quality. Logan Paul to fight KSI? How could he lose? But lately, what I've been seeing a lot in the comments is requests for me to weigh in on some contemporary political events happening here in Canada. So today I thought we would talk about Canada's newest political party, the People's Party of Canada, which just came into existence a couple weeks ago. So let me tell you the story. Last May, Andrew Scheer was made head of the Conservative Party of Canada and thus became the prime ministerial candidate to run against Justin Trudeau in the 2019 Canadian election. Scheer won an incredibly narrow victory over his opponent opponent, Maxime Bernier. The final tally was 50.95% for Scheer and 49.05% for Bernier. Now this was a pretty big upset because everybody in the Canadian media had been predicting that Bernier would win relatively easily. Even though internal party elections are incredibly difficult to poll in Canada, there was a general sense that Bernier had this thing wrapped up because he was sort of the more interesting galvanizing candidate, whereas Scheer was sort of the more bland establishment kind of guy. And people figured that had to count for something. Scheer, as we have talked about before, is the former Speaker of Parliament. He is generally a pretty even even keel, moderately dispositioned sort of guy. But who is Bernier? Well, one of the most important things to know about him is that he is a French Canadian from Quebec. I really don't think we would be talking about him at all if it was not for that fact. Because you see, over the last 25 years, Canada's Conservative parties have performed very poorly in Quebec for a number of reasons. One is that Quebec voters have just been getting steadily more left-wing at a time when the Conservative party has been getting steadily more right-wing. So there was just kind of a logical mismatch there. But the other thing is that Quebec voters just generally do not like to vote for non-Quebec politicians. This is literally one of the single biggest predictive variables in Canadian politics. If a political party is led by a Quebecer, Quebecers will vote for it. If it isn't, they won't. And since the Conservative Party is broadly dominated by people from the English provinces, particularly Western Canada, this has given them limited appeal. Now this is seen as a real political deficiency for the Conservative Party. Partly this is because Quebec is just Canada's second biggest province, so it has a lot of voters and a lot of parliamentary seats. But partly this is because Quebec also just kind of has this very exalted position in the mind of the Canadian political establishment. They buy into this whole idea that Canada is supposed to be like this equal marriage between French people and English people, and if either side of that partnership is dissatisfied, well, then that means the government has committed like some deep moral failing. So anyway, in the 2006 election that brought the Conservative Party to power in Canada, the Conservative Party, rather predictably, only won a measly 10 seats in Quebec. Prime Minister Harper was elected to power with the smallest victory in Quebec of any prime minister in over 25 years. So that put a lot of pressure on Prime Minister Harper to really elevate the importance of those 10 parliamentarians so that in the next election, he could go back to Quebec and say, look, Quebecers play a very important and valued role in this conservative administration. Vote for me. And as a result, one of those 10, Maxime Bernier, was made Harper's foreign minister, which is obviously one of the most important jobs in any government. And this promotion turned Maxime Bernier into like a big political star overnight. And he became an even bigger celebrity when he proceeded to get fired from that job less than a year later, after he left secret government documents at his biker girlfriend's house overnight. Bernier loved it all because Bernier loves the spotlight. He is this very outgoing guy who really likes to be seen as controversial and provocative. Even after he was kicked out of the cabinet, he continued to be this very high profile figure. And the media loved him because he was often very outspoken and had these very eccentric opinions on lots of things. That kind of person is quite rare in Canadian politics just because the party bosses tend to really keep a lid on things. In time, Bernier became particularly well known for being one of the Conservative Party's most reliably libertarian members. Someone was sort of broadly across the board anti-government views. You know, like big cuts to government spending and much lower taxes and regulations, that sort of thing. Bernier also made a name for himself as being very critical of the role of the dairy cartel in the Canadian agricultural industry, which sounds like a very boring issue, and I guess it is, but it's considered a real hot topic in Canada. Anyway, flash forward to 2017. The Conservatives and Harper are out of power, and Bernier narrowly loses the Conservative Party leadership race to Andrew Scheer. Bernier was right on the brink of being able to transform the Conservative Party in his own eccentric image, 
but now suddenly he has nothing. So what does he do? Well, basically he starts getting pretty whiny. Shortly after losing, he announced that he was gonna start writing this big tell-all book that was gonna settle a lot of scores. In particular, he was gonna really lay into Sheer for being a real tool of the special interests who only won because a lot of fake conservatives supported him. A real tool of the dairy industry in particular. Again, considered quite the sick burn in Canada. And then more recently, Bernier starts talking an awful lot about an issue that he previously had not really expressed many opinions on, which is immigration. He starts tweeting a lot about how Canada is under this cult of diversity being pushed by Prime Minister Trudeau, and how the immigration rates are too high, and how there is not enough cultural assimilation. This causes a lot of anxiety for Scheer and his people, because if there is one group the Conservative Party really wants to win the votes of, other than Quebecers, it is immigrants and minorities. But then, late last month, right on the eve of the Conservative Party's big annual conference in Halifax, Bernier announces that he has finally reached his tipping point and he is ditching the Conservatives altogether. He says that he is going to make his own political party dedicated to the issues that most matter to him. This includes libertarian economics, immigration restriction, and of course, free speech. Now, it would be fair to say that almost no one in the Canadian elite has taken this idea seriously. Certainly no sitting conservative politicians anywhere in Canada have shown any interest in defecting to Bernier's team. All of the conservative big shots like Premier Ford and former Prime Minister Harper have explicitly denounced the idea. The media has basically portrayed Bernier as a sore loser, someone very vain and spoiled and desperate for attention. Because Bernier has chosen to make immigration skeptical a big part of his new movement as well. A lot of people have accused him of pandering to racism and xenophobia. Now what do I think about it all? I think there's actually a pretty big appetite in Canada for what Bernier is selling. I think that when you look at the polls, you see that a lot of Canadians, particularly conservative Canadians, do in fact have views that are quite similar to Bernier's on matters of immigration and economics and free speech. And likewise, even though Justin Trudeau is increasingly unpopular, I don't think that Andrew Scheer has done a good job as presenting himself as a real aggressive alternative. Scheer is a very, very cautious man by instinct and temperament. Scheer does not want to be seen as controversial or offensive, which is all well and good, but that means what he is seen as is boring. But that being said, there are two big things working against Bernier. One is that conservatives in this country have a lot of anxiety about splitting the vote. Between 1993 and 2003, Canada experimented with having two conservative parties, and this was widely blamed for the reason why the Liberal Party was able to win three back-to-back -back elections. I personally think that's kind of overstating things since there was obviously a lot of other variables that could explain those victories as well. But you know, the era of two conservative parties is like this very entrenched story we tell about politics in Canada and I think a lot of conservative voters were in fact quite traumatized by it. Justin Trudeau is so hated by conservatives right now, it is maybe not the best time to be making an argument for principle over strategy. The second thing, which goes all the way back to the beginning of this story, is that Bernier is a French Canadian. He speaks English quite badly. I think I can be successful. Uh, we have the grassroots support, and also we can have the support of people who, who decided not to vote at the last election because they don't believe in politicians anymore. Because, you know, politicians try to please everybody and at the end they don't please everybody. And thus can come off as a little exotic and weird. There are a lot of conservative voters out there who might be tempted in theory to support Bernier, but be turned off by how much of a stereotypical Quebec politician he seems like. This would include being spoiled and entitled and basically assuming the whole world should revolve around them. Since Quebecers all hate me anyway, I can also say that Quebecers are also perceived as being more racist and xenophobic than other Canadians. When Quebecers complain about immigration, they are usually complaining about perceived threats to their own very particular French culture, as opposed to sort of the wider Canadian culture, which they often don't really care about or understand. I mean, you can really make a strong argument that it's actually the French Canadians who are the least assimilated people in Canada. So when you got someone like Bernier running around talking about the need to protect our culture in his thick French accent, it is easy for a lot of Canadians to look at him and think, well, he's talking about his issues, not about ours. Now, I don't think Bernier has no chance. The political culture in the Western world is obviously in a lot of flux right now, and I don't want to embarrass myself by making very strong predictions either way. And I do think the fact that he is so well known and the fact that he came so close to winning the conservative leadership last year 
suggests that if anyone is going to pull off what he is attempting to do, it would probably be him. It all just ultimately comes down to a calculation on the part of voters, particularly conservative voters. Is it most important to beat Justin Trudeau by any means necessary, with any candidate necessary? Or is it more important to give a certain right-wing populist agenda a voice in Parliament, even if that increases the likelihood that Justin Trudeau will win a second term? Of course, it's also possible that you could get this weird outcome where Scheer's party and Bernier's party hold a majority of seats together, but Justin Trudeau's party still holds the plurality. That could create a very interesting interesting situation in Canadian politics where Scheer could maybe become Prime Minister, but then be unable to get anything passed without the votes of the Bernier party. Anyway, I want to hear what you guys think about all of this. Do you think Bernier is doing the right thing? Whose side are you on? And let me know if you want to see more Canadian political analysis videos like this in the future. In the meantime, be sure to read my weekly column in the Washington Post, in which I break down Canadian politics for a global audience. I will post the link in the description, and I will see you all next week.